We've just been seeing how to use values of a function to estimate values of its derivative. The natural next step is to talk about doing the same thing for numerical integration. An older word for this process is quadrature. We want to find a definite integral, not an antiderivative, by taking a linear combination of function values, just as we did in finite differences. We're going to assume throughout this section that the evaluation nodes have an equal spacing h. The weights in this combination are constants that completely determine the method. I'll use tk to represent node k, as usual, ranging from k equals 0 to k equals n. The first and last nodes correspond to the endpoints of the interval. Our strategy may sound familiar. We'll interpolate the values and then integrate the interpolant. In this context, we usually don't enforce any interpolant smoothness beyond continuity. That way, we don't have to solve a linear system as you do when you do cubic splines. When the interpolant in this strategy is a piecewise polynomial, the resulting method is called a newton coates integration formula. And when we have the particular case of a piecewise linear interpolant, it's called the trapezoid formula. There's a simple geometric intuition behind the name. Here's a function over the interval, which we divide up into n equal pieces. We evaluate the function at these nodes, and then draw the piecewise linear interpolant. The area underneath the interpolant is the sum of the areas of these trapezoids. Now, I could easily derive the formula from that picture, but I want to show how it arises instead from our hat function form for the piecewise linear interpolant. If we integrate this interpolant, we can take the integral inside the sum and pass the constant function value. So the weights in the formula are just the areas under the hat functions. The first hat function starts at 1 and goes down to 0 at t1. We just need to find the area of a triangle. That's 1 half times the base h times the height 1. The next hat function gives us two triangles of the same size for a total of h. This repeats all the way up to the last hat function, which again just has one triangle, so we get 1 half h again. Going back to the formula, we put in the weights I just found and pull out the common factor of h in all of them. The first and last function values get one half weight, and the rest of the function values are just added in together. I'll call this right I'll call this result t sub f as a function of n, the number of subintervals. And this is the trapezoid formula. It's possible to analyze the accuracy of the trapezoid formula using only tools you already know. But I can't resist showing off this formula, which is one of my favorites. It says that the exact integral is given by the trapezoid formula plus an infinite series of corrections. The first in the series is a multiple of h squared, the second is a multiple of h to the fourth, and so on. This is called the Euler-Maclaurin formula. 
It's not easy to prove, but it is a beautiful result. Now, from the standpoint of the trapezoid formula, Euler McLaurin says that the leading order of the error is second order. From here, there are at least two ways you could get formulas of higher order of accuracy. One technique starts, one technique continues from where we started and just interpolates by piecewise quadratics. That gives Simpson's formula, which is one you may have seen before. It's not hard to do, but I want to show you a different route called extrapolation, both because it's interesting and it's a technique that can be used much more generally. All we need is a starting point, just like the euler maclaurin formula in our case, which says that some exact result is equal to our algorithm plus an error series in some parameter. For us, that's n. Here, the series only has even powers of n, but that's not necessary. Now, coefficients in the series are constants, but we don't need to know what their values are, just that they're there. That's good because in the euler maclaurin formula, these constants depend on knowing things about f that we might not have. Given the series, we can evaluate the algorithm again at parameter 2n instead of n. Now, if we take an appropriate combination of these two equations, we can knock out the second order term. Specifically, 4 times t at 2n minus t at n gives us 3i plus an error that starts at fourth order. This inspires the definition of a new formula. We'll take that linear combination of t's and divide it by 3, and that should give us a new estimate for i that I call s. In fact, this is exactly Simpson's formula. Now we can play the same game again. Write down the error expansion for s, which is fourth order accurate and rewrite it after you double n again. Now we can take a combination that cancels out the fourth order terms. So we define a third formula that I'm calling R, which is a combination of two s values at 2n and 4n. And this method has to be sixth order accurate. Obviously, we can keep doing this as long as we want. The process is called Romberg integration. But again, this is just one particular way to do an extrapolation. There's one more pleasant surprise about this process. Let's say we start with just n equals 2 subintervals. That gives us t of 2 at the cost of three evaluations of f. Now let's carry these down to a the next level and subdivide those intervals. That's the same as doubling n to give us t4. But we only have to make two new evaluations of f, not five total evaluations. With those two t values, we can find the Simpson value s of 4. And we can go to the next level, copy all the old nodes and function values, Subdivide again to get t8. That gives us s8. Then the two s's combine to give us r of 8. And so on. Each new level lets us recycle the old function values to come up with the next values that we need. Here's how the algebra plays out. For convenience, I'm just going to set the interval from 0 to 1, but that's not important at all. I'm going to write out t of 2n in a strange way, alternating lines with each new term in the sum. In the first row, I have all the even multiples of 1 over 2n, and in the second row, I have the odd multiples. But this first row, 
just represents all the F values being recycled from the previous level. In fact, the first row is just one half of the value of t from the previous level. So we don't even need the individual f values. The second row consists of all the new nodes. Here I've defined a nice smooth function and an interval. So we can take a look at it here. All right, and this is what I want to integrate. Now. If we thought about it, we could probably integrate this particular function exactly, but let's just have MATLAB's built-in integration function give us an accurate number for it. Here we go. I'll start off with just two intervals, and I'm setting up nodes for that value of n. Then y will be the value of f at all the nodes. And then based on that, here's a simple way to write the trapezoid formula. h times everything. The first and last values of f are divided by 2, and the rest are just added in together. Notice that in MATLAB all indexes start with 1, so instead of this being t0, this actually corresponds to, I'm sorry, um, instead of referring to index number 0 for t0, we have to use 1. We have to shift all the indices up by 1. So instead of n, this is n plus 1, and so on. And this is already not bad, considering we've only used a few points. Now I will double n, which means I need to recompute the nodes. But as I just showed, you don't have to recompute all the function values. You don't even have to refer to the old function values anymore. They're all stored in t for us. So I'm just going to evaluate f at every other node starting from the second. And then the new value of the trapezoid is estimate. It's 1 half times the old plus h times the sum of the new values. And here we see that that is a good deal more accurate. If n were larger, we would expect this to go down by a factor of about 4 for a second order method. We're actually doing better than that for now because we're so small with n. But now that I have two values of t, one at n and one at 2n, I can use that to define a value for Simpson's formula by extrapolation. And so far, that's not really an improvement. But let's just stay tuned and see what happens. So now that I've used my, my oldest t value, I don't need it anymore. And so the old is what I previously called the new. Then I double n again. These are all the same lines as before because it's the exact same process. And now my newest trapezoid error right, is about 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4, and that's getting close to a factor of 4 smaller. It's definitely better than what we had before. So now with the two most recent values of t, what we originally called 2n and 4n, I can compute a new Simpson estimate, which should be the best that we had so far. And so these two are supposed to be fourth order, going down by a factor of 16 as you double n. But now that I have two Simpson values at 2n and 4n, I can use that to define an r value at 4n. And that's better still because this is a sixth order estimate. One more time through. So now I've used two, the, mo the most recent two values of t, so I have to update what I consider to be the old. I've used two values of s, so I can get rid of the oldest and call the new one the old one. Uh, this is all the same. 
get a new value for the trapezoid. From that, I get a new Simpson. From that, I get a new R. They're all better than their previous counterparts, with the R value being the best one yet. But of course, now that I have two values of R, I can go out one more level to an eighth order estimate. And now I've got seven digits of accuracy. So I've gotten all that accuracy just by very clever use of these 17 values of the function.